Greetings and welcome to another thrilling and exciting episode of the Planetary Persuader. This is for February 17, 2017, take two. And um, <clears throat> looking at the stars today in the sky, what would we see? Well, we've got a moon in uh, the western sign of Scorpio today. And that's going to move tomorrow, Saturday at 10.52 a.m. Pacific Standard Time into the sign of Sagittarius. Um, we're in between eclipses now. <clears throat> so, since you missed last week, I'm going to do a little recap of what never got broadcast <clears throat> on this thing here. So, we had a um, full moon lunar eclipse in the uh, literal constellation of Cancer in the nakshatra of Alesha in Vedic astrology. So in Western astrology that was a Leo full moon. And, um, and so, you know, being that the uh, sub-ruling planet of Alesha, besides being lunar ruled itself and it was a full moon, is Mercury. So it's a real mind trip on what happened. And anyhow, I had a bunch of personal things that went, went awry in my own life the weekend before that that are all resolved now and seem good and um, or at least mostly resolved I mean there's a, there's, a, there's a few other things but um, what we're looking at this week in this uh, waning moon period between eclipses is how to stay in balance now <coughs> tomorrow pardon me <clears throat> Um, at 3.32 a.m., we've got the sun moving into Pisces in uh, Western astrology. So, sun moves into Pisces in Western astrology. And so, our focus goes away from so much of our, our knowledge and our um, social life into what our personal karma is, what our beliefs are, what our faith is, and how do we universalize love for everyone. And so, that's a lot of... That's a lot, a lot of. Now, um, Venus has been in Aries, and Venus has been has been slowing down, and Venus is going to go retrograde in, in a couple of weeks on the 4th. So that's something super interesting to keep in mind as well. And so there's going to be this, uh, Venus is actually going to go retrograde, and then um, eventually it will go back into Pisces especially in those like in that creative 27 degree place too by the time we get to early April so it's a really creative time in a lot of ways and in Vedic astrology Venus is in Pisces is very creative so there, there's something to look at that now you know on the other hand too <clears throat> Western astrology Mars is in Aries and Mars in Aries is a real mofo and can, um, even though it's exalted in position, it can really cook up the angry fires in a way that is more impulsive. And therefore, it's a lot more dangerous than, say, Mars and Scorpio. Because it's, um, it's not as sublimated. It's pretty obvious. And it's, pretty, and it's super aggressive. And so that's something that, you know, we have to keep in mind as well. Okay. So, without any... Uh, Further ado, sign by sign, we're going to do this um, in this week's episode of the Planetary Persuader. So, all right, we shall begin. So, greetings, Aries. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, right now, we're in a place where you've got Venus and Mars in the first house, so that, as well as Uranus. So, 
and Venus and Uranus are getting close to being conjoined to each other which means that um, there can be a certain amount of uh, amorous surprises you know um, surprise love affairs and whatnot the other thing is with um, Mars and Aries also uh, approaching the conjunction of Uranus um, this week. In fact, um, even as we uh, speak here this weekend, um, it's just a lot, you know. It's a lot to uh, to keep on on with yourself. So you know, keep that in mind that there's a lot of extraneous tensions out there and. Um, not everything is going to be easy, so if there's shocking situations and surprises like in this area where we have a dam fail and people evacuated and more rain on it on the way or coming down right now as we speak, <laughs> there's just no telling. So, um, <clears throat> but we are going to go sign by sign right now, you know, as we're doing Aries here. I would just say this is an intense weekend for you. It's a good weekend for travel, though. You know, if you need to go someplace, blow out of town. It's not going to be that bad. Um, but there's going to be a lot of further transformation this week as we're sandwiched between eclipses and um, heading towards the new moon for next weekend. Well, hello, Taurus, and welcome to your horoscope. Now, I mean, for you, the, the deal is, is that you've got this... You've got kind of secret enemies, you've got some subconscious baggage you're dealing with, so it's a lot of psychological, um, well, I guess you'd call them uh, mind flip outs or whatever. It, the thing is, pay attention to your dreams, spend more time meditating, do things that create good karma, that are going to ease your mind. Um, you can't always be ready for every single shock and surprise, and don't expect ever, anyone to be that way, you know. I mean, insurance companies love this. What are you going to do if, you know, and it's like, okay. You know, I mean, we sold a lot of military hardware this that we'll never, ever use in this country just based on that. I think we, you know, last I heard, we had like enough weapons to kill everybody 50 times. I mean, I, I guess I'm not so worried about the last 49. I'm just wondering why waste the money? <laughs> You know, it's bizarre, <laughs> if anything, you know, it's like, we're starving our children so we can make sure we're the biggest butt kickers in the neighborhood, you know. I mean, that's the kind of karma that we're dealing with. It's kind of, um, it's just, it's just strange. It, it doesn't, one of the things that's good for you, though, is keep working on your health. You know, Jupiter transiting, sixth house, health gets better. Um, Friday night's kind of a romantic moon with moon and Scorpio. You guys do well together, you know, you can do that. The Passion Plus Dance. I, I got some Scorpio Taurus couple friends, and yeah, they're, you know, what do they say? One of the Mountain Astrologer cartoons was they love each other even after death. It's great. Um, and uh, let's see, we got Mercury is, um, that tricky little planet, is um, on its way. This is the last week it's going to be in Aquarius, so keep that in mind too. So that means that you're you're thinking clearly. You, you should be thinking clearly right now. And um, your social life comes way more into play this week. So good friends show up. That's the good news for Taurus. All right. Well, well, well. So greetings, Gemini. And welcome to your horoscope. So, so with uh, Mercury in Aquarius, and that's the ninth house, that means you're able to learn a new language. You're able to take on more advanced information than you'd normally be able to handle. And um, you've also got, um, got the North Node in your fourth house, in your place of uh, heritage, place of your parents. So, you know, knowing about your family, where they came from, what that whole mystery is, you're good at that right now. Um, Creative energy, do it flowing nicely. You know, even though Jupiter's retrograde in the fifth house, it's great. You know, it's working. You know, and so 
go over your creative ideas this weekend moon's going to go into the seventh house saturday sunday so that's a good time for romance for you but it's also kind of like working on the hard stuff because saturn's there remember saturn <clears throat> good old saturn and sagittarius and the very end of sagittarius now vedic sagittarius so i mean there's some you know real ego crushing moments and things you're going to have to deal with here in order to uh make this whole dance work um big transformation coming up also it's a, an opportunity for you this week to show your leadership and there's a lot of fun social gatherings to be involved with too that'll there's romance intrigue shock surprises <laughs> all right so greetings cancer welcome 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 to your horoscope um so like Aquarius time was all about transformation, change, letting go, letting other people help you, paying attention to your intuition, and um, learning that life is what happens within you, but it's also what happens outside of you. So those two things have to be nurtured, those two things have to be kept in balance in order for you to feel good about yourself. Now, s Friday seems good. I mean, Moon and Scorpio, it's delightful, it's creative, it's in your fifth house. If you have a female child, you'll be paying attention to her. Um, you know, love affairs, good times. It's a good pleasure seeking night. You know, I mean, I think this weekend, though, with the Moon mostly in Sagittarius in your sixth house, will be good for like organizing, cleaning up, you know. Um, just doing the last things you got to do to get through the winter, the rest of it, and um, you know, there's some transformation going on in your personal relationships. That's going to be evident. Uh, pay attention, to, like I said again, pay attention to your intuition with Mercury in the eighth house. Um, but you're getting luckier this week. You know, sun goes in your ninth house. Great time for education. Great time for travel. Great time for spiritual work. Great time to you know be luckier and increase your own good fortune. So that's a great shift for for Cancer and all the water signs. Uh, you know, Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer. It's like you guys, your days are coming. Some good, some good is coming through this. A little relief, we'll say. Well, hello, Leo. And welcome to your horoscope. So, I mean, right now we've got ourselves, um, this last moon that was full was in your sign. So, in a lot of ways, you know, this is about you, especially in terms of relationships. Of course, that's going to change a little bit. In fact, the person you're in relationship with will seem like they're more in power. And it's like, oh man, I got to just go with what they say. It's really funny when you have two couples, you know, a couple that both partners feel that, oh man, I always got to listen to him. Oh, I have to always listen to her. You know, they're always, well, at least you're listening. Um, I know that because partly because of what I do, you know, I know my, my partner finds me totally annoying. <laughs> you know, there's a Leo too, so you know, that's, that's, that's trite. Right. But, I mean, you're going through a lot more transformation, and you have to let go this week a little more. Probably even a little more than your partner. Um, but uh, there's a lot of inspiration to be educated, to travel, to do your spiritual work, to have some kind of good fortune come down on you. So that's a blessing. There is a blessing amidst all this outer chaos and stuff and you'll say the right thing at the right time you have the right words to negotiate things if you're worried about that and um, the weekend looks fun for you for the most part I mean there's limits and difficulties but you know something good is going to happen and you'll acknowledge that and you'll feel good about it and uh, and so it goes well greetings Virgo and welcome to your horoscope so um Aquarius time is a lot about working with others, being flexible, being organized, helping others, you know, service work, charitable causes, dealing with your own personal health issues. Well, the good news is your health is going to get better, okay? So, I mean, we've got sun moving into your seventh house now. And, um, you know, Friday night seems chill, hang out with friends. The weekend is like a good week weekend to be a home buddy more. 
stay at home, get your home stuff done, and um, that way uh, you'll be able to uplift, you know, those around you, what is around you. Now that the sun is in your seventh house with Neptune, it's like love is kind of like an illusion, but you know, people that share like a religious practice, pray together, meditate together, they got a better record of staying together as couples. And so if you haven't tried that together, you might want to try that together. There's certain little things, the aesthetic, what works in the higher vibration, not just a selfish, you know, ooh, pleasure me vibration, but that one that lets us go and let go into eternal space. So it's like, it's really time for Virgo, Virgo rising people to work on healing their relationships. And yeah, I mean, there's going to be dynamite in the bedroom. You got Uranus, Mars, Venus in the eighth house. Come on. So it's, you know, but the thing is, it's other people's power. You know, it's other people's power allowing that to happen. So it's always, it's always a crazy space to be. But you have some fun this week. I mean, you know, Moon's going to be in your fifth house and on Tuesday. And, you know, you're, you're going to, there's going to be some uplifting vibe. And, and, you know, economically things are improving for you too. Um, you know, the retrograde Jupiter actually in this particular position, Western Libra or Vedic Virgo works better that way. Mm -hmm. Trust me on this. Yeah. Yeah, I know. No, none of my Western astrologer friends could, could predict the Trumpster, but almost all my Vedic astrologer friends did. So people... You know, I mean, I know only about one out of 20 of us know that, that art, the art of Jyotish, but I, I encourage my, my viewers to, to explore it, you know. I mean, yeah, most of us go one sign back. Oh, I don't want to be that sign. You know, would you just <laughs> knock it off, you know. <laughs> it ain't just the sun, folks. It's the actual constellations. They, they do have their own sway on things. And when you, that's what, this is the deep astrology. Even the Western astrologers I know that do the deep astrology, they acknowledge the actual star where it is in the sky and they do some of that stuff too so I encourage that but yeah this stuff works so we you know I still do it for you yeah so it does work um and greetings Libra welcome to your horoscope I mean <clears throat> I mean for you right now it's about keeping all the goodness in your relationship inspiring alive fun engaging I mean it could even be kinky um but the deal is you got a lot more work on your plate right now and you got to help other people right now and um, you you have great ideas too you know it's the last week of mercury going through your fifth house so there's ideas galore percolating it's good the home foundation might be a little bit shaky right now um, <clears throat> relationship with siblings old friends might be a little limited right now. You might be able to work on it over the weekend, though. You might be able to get back with old friends, make things happen, pay attention to your spiritual life. There's definitely a link to your physical health right now. Some of that stuff's going to have to be worked on, too. So, yeah, it's a lot of stuff to be worked on, but, you know. Hey, what are we here for, anyhow, right? Right. So, uh, greetings, Scorpio, and welcome to your horoscope. Well, I mean... The good news is, is this is the time, beginning now, where you are focused on matters of the heart. It's like, I want to open up my heart. This is who I am. This is who I love. I love being who I am and what I'm doing. Um, my creative expression has no end. It's always in a flow. And I'm here to bring that. And I want that love and I want that creative expression to reflect spiritual values that are more eternal and less temporal that are less material and more elevated with you know sattvic or moksha loving themes you know that's that's kind of where I want to go with this um, moons in Scorpio fr Friday and, and for those of you who are you know Scorpios that are Vedic Libras you know which all of you are having a conjunction today are um, <clears throat> this is a good Venus day you know this is kind of a mmm I'm feeling some sweetness here coming on, and especially as, you know, we're already in Vedic Aquarius, and um, we're really close to, sun's going to move into Pisces, so it'll be water on water when you wake up Saturday morning, so it's kind of a, a juicy, dreamy, imaginative uh, Friday night. And then you got to, you know, you can make some money this weekend, while um, Saturn and the Moon transit 
your second house, or at least deal with finances, deal with family matters, practical matters, um, and you use your creative expression to help other people this weekend too. That's and this week. That's part of it. That creative expression goes as a service. Sometimes you got to give to get. And um, your your spiritual life is very much more illuminated, more than usual. It's got to be part of your practice. Um, good friends want to see you. Try to make time for them. That would help. Okay. Well, hello, Sagittarius, and welcome to your horoscope. So, well, we've got... Um, the Sun moving out of Saturn ruled Aquarius into Jupiter ruled Pisces on Saturday morning. And the Sun goes and the Moon goes out of Scorpio into Sagittarius Saturday morning. So it's kind of like there's that, you know, first water on water element, but now it's like Jupiter on Jupiter. Which is a lot of good fortune. And it's a lot of jokes and it's a lot of happiness and it's a lot of spiritual upliftment. And that's really where we want to go with this is to be spiritually uplifted. I mean, I know there's like the agnostic Sagittarius, they don't want to be cumbered by false beliefs and things like that, so I get that. And then there's a the fanatical, like, man, you're believing a little too far, like you're scaring me, Sagittarius. And then there's a the sports fanatic, Sagittarius, the animal lover, half animal, Sagittarius. You know, there's all these different kinds of Sagittarius out there, um, but this week we're moving to a place where you pay attention to your ancestors, your home life, your roots, where you're coming from, and then you got all this creative energy. If you have kids, to play with your kids, work on creative projects. There's Venus, Mars, Uranus. There's like inspiration is just bubbling, you know, and, and it is Pisces time. It is time for the imagination. Even looking at your own personal history growing up, family, I mean, even in that, there's art to be found in that that's endearing now you've got this whole thing like if you're Sagittarius and you're born like the 18th 19th 20th I mean you're gonna be you know or even the 15th on you know that part you're feeling Saturn's weight you know you're feeling your limitations and so you gotta do you know you gotta do some work you, you gotta um, honor Chenny you know honor Saturn that's a Sanskrit name for Saturn is Chenny and uh, and Shenny can be very sweet and slow, can be very gentle, but it's consistent and it's there and there's discipline and there's getting rid of stuff and that's the truth. You, you have to deal with those things. You can't just like deny it. Jupiter's in your 11th house. You may have to get rid of some friends. There's some friends that are users that don't belong in your space. They just mess everything up, you know, and once you discover that, it's kind of like a good idea to like, woo, 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 sorry, time for you to make new friends to burn, hi. <laughs> <You know. laughs> oh, but I'm going, yeah, well, when you do and you come back, we'll work on it then, all right. 12 step is around the corner. <laughs> yeah, oh, greetings Capricorn and welcome to your horoscope. Okay. So, let's see here now. All right. Now, <clears throat> we all have to deal with limits in life. Um, this last month has been mostly about your finances, your relationship with your family, and, you know, maybe having a sore throat or things going on with your ear or neck or teeth work, all that kind of stuff. Um, but now we're moving into a place where we're focusing more on your neighborhood the the neighbors, friends, siblings, your peers, people you grew up with, people you just hang out with, and your ability to work with your hands, your ability to have hobbies and many interests. That's part of what this coming month is about. And um, there's a lot of foundational stuff that needs to change. It's like you're redecorating your house or something with Uranus and Mars and Venus all together there in your fourth house. And then Saturn in the 12th, it's like, look, yeah, I know it's old karma and you're hoping they forget, right? They don't forget. Maybe they do, but, you know, if you make it good and they remember, they will look at you in a really positive fashion. If you just, you know, huff it away like that, they'll just think of you as a psycho deadbeat that they don't want to really have anything to do with. There's no room for intimacy because there's been so many lies, there's been so many excuses, there's been so much stuff, they're never going to really get to your place, okay? 
So anyhow, you have a lot of career opportunities that are good. Um, this weekend looks like fun Friday night, good night to party. I, I would say those Saturday, Sunday lay low. You know, it's kind of like 12th house, just kind of work on your spiritual life, work on your karma, pay your bills, pay your debt, do good. Treat others like you would like them to treat you. Don't just like go, oh, this is how I want to be treated and I just do everyone else the way I feel like it. Uh, you, you. My experience with the universe is it, it, it will not go well if you continue in that path. <laughs> I know, yeah. Greetings Aquarius and welcome to your horoscope. So, this is your last day of Sun in Aquarius and uh, we got Moon in your Midheaven because Moon's in Scorpio. So it's kind of like your grand finale. And, um, and I know that there's actually a uh, national strike today. Yeah. They're in, in the United States. They're encouraging people not to go to work today or do anything unless you're like emergency services personnel or something. So, uh, yeah, and then I guess it's to protest the electoral college decision of millionaire, you're fired, Donald Trump. <laughs> and thank you, dog, for shaking up the camera for me. Appreciate that. And as we move on, we will find um, that this week we change from just your personal will of the soul to family and monetary affairs, things that affect your neck, maybe your teeth, your your uh, ears, and, um, and general values. You know, that's what's going to be in focus for the next few weeks. We do have a moon in Aquarius coming up this week, though, on um, Thursday morning at uh, 9.17, and that'll carry on t till uh, Saturday afternoon. So that's when you can shine the last... Uh, the last another chance to shine even though it, it will be Pisces time by then and we've got um, Saturn in your 11th house still but it's getting towards that karma house of the 12th house so a lot of things that you've put on the back burner that you've needed that you need to complete this is really a time for Aquarius to get down focus on on completing stuff and do better it's also a good year for travel too and I, I know a lot of you are doing that already so I don't have to say much more. Hello. Hello, Pisces, and welcome to your horoscope. So, here it is, 3.32 a.m., Saturday morning, the 18th, sun moves into Pisces. It's all about you. It's all about you through the 19th of um, March, and um, good things, you know, good things are going to happen. Um, I think the first thing is, you know, you're not, you're off your karma cycle. So this is where you're able to implement your conscious will. And since you're known as one of the more compassionate signs in the zodiac, boy, don't we need compassion now more than ever? So we need more of you, especially with Neptune and Chiron in your first house. There's some really good healing ability that you can bring to the planet. Um, and money can be made very quickly. It could go very fast too, but you're kind of in the financial market right now, I see. Things are, are coming forward. And you've got to let other people give you money too. You've got to let other people help you. That's part of the deal for you to have success in this cycle right now. But you also have a certain amount of leadership. And that's knocking on the door of an expanded social life that's even going to be better for you. So, so I see good, and then I see more good. And yeah, there's tension. You know, we all got that Pluto Uranus square, all of us in our charts. We're all dealing with this. So nobody gets a free lunch, nobody gets a free ride. Um, next week, even more interesting and fascinating things are going to happen. So I thank you.